Ross might be out. Taken comfortably, and that's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary. Hello everyone, welcome to State Bat with Devesh. I hope you remember that the last episode which we did with uh, two of the national player, uh, Cecil Parvej and Rijwan Chima, and uh, there were a lot of reactions and the messages which came to me, and some of the messages were very positive. Some of the messages were that uh, players are frustrated because they are not getting selected. That's why now they have decided to speak. Uh, everyone is welcome to think what they think and they are free to speak and make their opinion. But I sincerely believe <coughs> that that was not the case. First of all, Rijwan did play in Dubai, so he is getting selected. Uh, Cecil was playing uh, till Malaysia tour, so he was in the team. So it is not entirely true that they are not being selected, that's why they are willing to speak now. So, I would like to think about it. But the core issue is not if they are getting selected or not. The issue is are they getting frustrated and if they are, then what are the reasons? And my effort through this program is to find out the core reasons why the system is failing players, parents and the coaches. So, Proceeding and taking that further, uh, today I have invited two of our uh, coaches and uh, one of the coach uh, served cricket in Canada for a long period like 8 years and uh, he was, he drew attention of a lot of people when he decided to close down his club and uh, and you, you know, uh, there are a lot of controversies, <coughs> there are a lot of discussions. And when I went to his uh, Facebook, Facebook account and I saw that some of the, all the cricket league's president came to his uh, post and uh, said good thing about him. So my question to, which my question, uh, so the question which came to my mind was that why he decided to close the club, which was doing pretty well and uh, he was quite successful and I rate the success by looking at his Facebook account and I saw all the league's president coming to his post and saying some good thing about his effort. So one of the guests is Mr. Tahir Khan uh, who is also, was also the coach of UCA and the other coach is a new in Canada, relatively new in Canada and he is also trying to help the young player. Uh, he has come from England. He himself was a player there and he is trying his best now to set up some infrastructure and the club to help the young people and young girls, young women and young players. So we will also take him into the debate and his name is Amit Ori. So first of all, I would like to welcome both of my guests. Mr. Tahir Khan and Amitori, and I would like to start this discuss, uh, discussion today with uh, Mr. Tahir Khan. So Tahir Khan, uh, coming to you first, would you like to tell us that you have been, you have been working like very hard for last eight years, right? And you set up a team and your team were doing pretty well in all the leagues, right? So, why you decided to open this club and why you decided to close? So, first you start and tell us that how your journey started in cricket in Canada. First of all, uh, thank you Davesh Bhai for inviting me and providing me this opportunity. I am very thankful to TAG TV. Uh, it all started in, uh, sometime in November 2011. Mm -hmm. Uh, when my son started playing, uh, decided to play cricket because his school started a cricket. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came home one day and asked me, Ke, Dad, my gym teacher doesn't know anything about cricket, he needs help. Mm -hmm. And I just as a joke, I threw, a, threw a question at him. I said, what do you know about cricket? He said, oh, I'm the best they have. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I said, okay, tell your teacher, I will be there tomorrow. So when I went there and I saw him playing, uh, since I played a uh, little bit cricket on my own in Pakistan, where I was originally born and raised, and uh, I played for a model town cricket club, mm -hmm. which is a uh, one of the one of the branded cricket club in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came to know that kid has a talent. Mm -hmm. So I let him play for a year and a half in the school just to check it out how far he wants to go with the cricket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized he's improving every day. Mm -hmm. Then a couple of people, they saw him playing cricket and they recommended me I should, uh, I should get him into a professional cricket. Mm -hmm. And I did some research and I decided to join Toronto Cricket Academy, mm -hmm. which was operated by, uh, uh, operated by Brian Hale, mm -hmm. and uh, God rest him in peace. Mm -hmm. And for some personal reasons, we couldn't work out the things the way it's supposed to be worked out. And uh, from there on, I decided to... Start your own. Start my own academy. Okay. Because I realized I will be working, making money, and giving to other people mm -hmm. to train my son, which I could do it myself. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity to take a, uh, take a golden handshake from General Motors of Canada, mm -hmm. uh, which I did. Mm -hmm. And I opened up the academy as a United Cricket Academy. So first of all, I would like to clarify all my audience that he is talking about Arsalan Khan, who was also under 19 um, uh, captain of Canada, yes. yeah. uh, who later became under 19 captain and also who toured uh, recently with uh, to St. Kitts yes. and who was part of uh, under uh, development team. So basically, if we can gather from your statement, uh, you started this club just because you wanted your son to play professional cricket right so yes your son was the reason you started this academy yes yes now take us through the journey so what happened after that so when people when people saw arslan playing cricket uh, into the into the league they all uh, other people they start asking me questions where he's getting trained what he's doing like he became uh, pretty much very, very popular around the junior cricket mm -hmm. and within no time. Mm -hmm. Then people came to know United Cricket Academy. Mm -hmm. They decided to come United Cricket Academy. Within three months, I have about 13 to 15 players under 13. Mm -hmm. And that was, and we entered a team, under 13 team. Mm -hmm into the Toronto District Cricket League, which, which which is the, at that moment, I believe till now, which is the largest league in North America. Mm -hmm. For junior cricket? For junior cricket. For junior cricket, yeah. But TDCA as it stands is the largest yeah. uh, cricket, cricket league in North America. Uh, I think now Brampton is uh, taking over, right? So, we'll see that, okay. Yeah, it could, you could be right. Yeah, you, okay. you could you could be right. Okay, so you started the academy and then now you are entering into a league yeah. um, for a junior cricket. So Which our first season was 2012. Okay. Okay. I believe, I'm not too sure, I mm -hmm. believe we were given 12 matches, mm -hmm. 14, 12 to 14 matches. Yeah. We were unbeaten mm -hmm. in that uh, tournament. Okay. In that tournament, mm -hmm. there was two conference. Mm -hmm. So we won the conference, mm -hmm. and my team went to playoff. Mm -hmm. Once my team went to playoff, we also won the playoff championship, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is this is, I think, 2012 uh, championship. If you can rotate it and show it, yeah, this is. 
Okay. This is 2012 conference. Mm -hmm. Great. And there's another one here that's 2012 champion. Okay. Okay. So, so from there on, news hit the roof. Mm -hmm. Everybody start talking about United Cricket Academy. Good. And there was one thing in my academy, we had a rule that there is no favoritism. Mm. I had 15 players. Mm -hmm. They were all my sons. Mm. I treated them as Equally. my son. Okay. Even my son was not allowed to call me, a, call me a dad on the ground. He has to address me as a coach. Okay. So, when you started this and you got your first success in 2012, as you were showing the trophy, uh, did anybody from Cricket Board or Ontario Board or any leagues started collaborating with you for the development of the kids, junior cricket? No. Okay. No. So, there were no, absolutely no help no, whatsoever no, no. from there, anybody. There was, there, was, uh, there was no help. The team who lost against me, they found a, they filed a protest against me. Hmm. And uh, then we went through the pro protest. They, they request, the board requested me ke that other academy is also, it, I believe it was a Markham Cricket Academy, is also a good academy. Uh, it'd be better if we have if we have a dual championship. I said no. The thing is, if I want it fair and square, the champion should be mine. Mm -hmm. And if if you think I did something wrong, you should give the you should give the. So tell me, uh, uh, Mr. Tahir Khan, when the frustration start creeping in because you decided to close it down. So there must be something going on between these period, like 2012 onward till today, when you decided, okay, enough is enough, and I'm going to close it down. Why I'm bringing this point is that every time I do this program, I request for transparency and accountability. So well, I would like to know, was that the reason why you decided to close it down? Well, let me <coughs> let me make it short and sweet. Mm -hmm. I was I was the I was the victim. I would say it because of frustration, mm -hmm. and I was the victim of system. Okay, so would you like to elaborate what was how you become a victim? Why you got frustrated? Uh, the main reason was every time when I notice, mm -hmm. when I realize there is something wrong. Mm -hmm. Either it's a bylaw, mm -hmm. either it's an umpire, mm -hmm. either it's a board of directors interfering. Mm -hmm. First of all, I was always against a person being a board of director mm -hmm. and has in a junior academy. To me, that is very simply, it's a conflict of interest. Okay. So you are saying, are you referring to TND or Cricket Ontario? What are you referring to? Well, if you want to go step by step, I've been frustrated by all, all three. All three leagues. So all TND, TND, uh, BDCL, cr uh, Cricket Cricket Council of Ontario, mm -hmm. and Cricket Canada. And what was the reason for frustration? The my major frustration was. They are the one they make the rules, mm -hmm. which is which is apparently they will make the rule. Yeah, yeah, and they are the one they don't follow. Okay, so you felt that they are not following the rules which they were making. Yeah, Do I you have, have any I've examples or you know. Oh sure, many time I, in T in TDCA I tell you one scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, it was raining mm -hmm. at Sunnybrook. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, the game has to stop. Mm -hmm. There was games going on in two grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing in the upper ground. The mm -hmm. game was playing played in the in the second ground, and the bot in the bottom. There was ground. another game. Okay. Another game. Okay. So when the rain stopped, the other ground was given one hour to start the game. Mm -hmm. 
we were not even given a complete, complete 15 minutes to start the game. Mm -hmm. And what was the reason given for that? Uh, the umpire say he has to go to another game. Okay. To me, that was not acceptable because I am the one who's paying the umpire. Mm -hmm. And the Canadian service industry rule says, mm -hmm. and the other thing, he asked me money up front. Mm. When the Canadian service rule says, you cannot collect the amount or the service charges before you provide the service. Okay, so did you complain to TND about this? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm coming yeah. to that. Yeah, okay. So, one of my bowlers start bowling mm -hmm. and he fell down. Mm. We was playing on an artificial turf mm -hmm. and you know artificial turfs are like a sandpaper. Mm. So, this guy was bleeding <coughs> from his arm from here. Mm. I didn't know that because umpire says he's okay, he's okay. So, after umpire asked him to continue bowling, he bowled a couple of balls and it started bleeding. You could see the blood coming out and it was burning. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, umpire raises his hand to me and he says, uh, bring a first aid kit because this kid is uh, injured. injured. Mm -hmm. His father was there too. Mm -hmm. We took the pictures. I asked the kid, he says, coach, it's burning. I can't, ev I can't even. Okay. I, uh, yeah. And umpire still insisted he has to finish his over. So what I did, I asked the, I asked the game to be, I asked my players to come out because his father was very upset. He was very keen to take his kid to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I asked the players to come out and I said to the umpire, I said, due to all the respect to you, I don't think it's fair. You, sh you haven't given a 45 minutes or an hour, which is a written time to finish the game, uh, to dry the ground, but you continue. Hmm. So look what you did. So you think that because umpire has to go to another game to earn more money, he just bypass all the rules. Yeah, so did you see at the TND what the rule says? After the rain, it was TN mandatory TN for TND, them to... TND rule says, if it's umpire's call, he has to make sure the ground is safe for the kids. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, there was another game at mm. the same same ground. They took one hour. Okay. Uh, same venue, but a different ground. They okay. have given one hour mm. to rest. But and that, yeah. So, I came home. I filed a complaint. Mm. directly to the president of the TDCA, CC, to junior coordinator and the first vice president. Mm. I believe my email went through. Mm -hmm. I got a response, I think, from junior coordinators, okay, we will look into it. Yeah, okay. And till today... There's no reply? Okay, so this is about TND. Uh, how was your experience with other leagues? Like your, obviously your team were playing in other leagues as well. I played in I played in Scarborough League. Mm -hmm. uh, Scarborough League is very good when it comes out when it comes to our children. Mm -hmm. They're very good. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of uh, giving you twenty over, they they play twenty five over. Mm -hmm. But the umpiring quality over there is also very, very poor. Well, quality of umpire overall... Overall, uh, overall is, is poor. Not good. We agree on that, right? Yeah, overall is poor. They are not well informed by the league, what changes or mm. what bylaws they have made, what changes they have made to yes. ICC rules. Mm. They are not very well aware of it. Okay. I can also give you a scenario if you want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. uh, like, particularly this year, there was under 18 playing and it states very clearly on the website that T20 will be played by the ICC rulings under 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, due to the time, they don't change uh, sides mm -hmm. over to over mm -hmm. uh, and the both coaches are agree, it will be changed after every five overs. Mm -hmm. I won't mention uh, the club's name because I have respect for every single individual they are running, they are all working hard. Yeah. And so the game went on. At the end of the 20 over, the game got tied. Mm. Now, 
you tell me as as a knowledgeable person about cricket i have seen you in action myself what would you do when there is a tie even there is a tie i'll Take go to the icc rule what icc rule says if they are saying under 18 will go through the icc rules yeah there should be super over super over so umpires are calling tdca umpires are trying to hold this and that umpires are trying to hold this and that it means they were not aware of the rules or they were trying to manipulate well it. <coughs> i think you have to you have to in, inquire about it i think there's little more into it yeah but i agree with you uh, and you know when i talk to this tnd's uh, people and i spoke to mohammad sheikh also mohammad sheikh's point is that i cannot be everywhere right so there is a limit to my presence everywhere and many a times he has to leave uh, to other people to decide and if those people who are responsible is not working with enough knowledge and discretion of power you know we cannot blame everybody for that but i agree that there is a problem in the execution of their plan and execution of their rules and that is across canada i have seen bdcl i have seen uh, other leagues as well um, president cannot be there so that's their defense that i cannot be there everywhere but the point is that if you are not there how you make sure that everything is in order someone has to take the responsibility or tell us who is the responsible person to take care of these things right but there is no answer for that well let me put it to you this way uh, most of the rules they are put on the website hmm. uh, which i'm totally against because there is no personal touch into it hmm. because uh, when you have active members mm -hmm. we we are all active members we are paid paid members mm -hmm. we don't run the leagues uh, we don't uh, uh, participate in the league free hmm. we pay, pay for it yeah, we pay. pay for it we pay for yes, empires yeah, okay yeah. we pay for empires we pay the league fee so i will uh, hold you here and i'll ask you a question sure so do you think that whatever amount you were paying you were not getting the return and the quality you were expecting and that's at up to your frustration yeah that's there's no question about it Okay, so for an example, I will ask, and I have heard this a lot of many times, and across Ontario, that quality of the ground for the under, under fourteen, under sixteen, under eighteen are not best of them. So they are not provided the best of the grounds all the time. So what is the reason for that? I believe you just uh, you just hit a nail in the coffin, mm -hmm. asking me that question. So <laughs> that's added to your frustrations. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh once you once you get to from un, you started under 13 under 15 under 17 then you get to under 19 mm. once the child goes to under 18 mm. he does not have the feel of the cover drive mm. going for four mm. because they been given opportunity such a grounds are like ross lord mm -hmm. where the grass is about 6 to 8 inches thick mm -hmm. and if it's rain mm. <laughs> they are just like a dump Mm. you know the pitches are not well maintained mm. you can see it by yourself and you as per you who is responsible for this to cut the grass is city or is a league responsibility well honestly the way i see it to me it's league's job mm -hmm. because i pay the league yeah because i spoke to some of the league guys and they said look we always request the city people but they do not do it so i don't know whom to blame well, to but me, i totally agree to this point that grassroots development in canada is suffering because of these policies because our utmost priority should be these guys not the middle age people or you know people who are in 60s or 70s playing cricket for their passion yes they should be given a ground but the utmost priority should be given to the under age people Like under 14 under 16 under 17 these are the guys who are going to take our future forward right you are absolutely right what you saying okay. but but the fact is the truth is is other way no one cares yes allow me to say that and that's the fact no yes. one cares yeah 
totally the agree with you. The Ross Lord Eglinton flat, mm -hmm. you are lucky if you get Sunny Brook a couple of matches. Hmm. I didn't get any, this season I didn't get any, any matches in Sunny Brook. Sunny hmm. Brook has, Sunny Brook's grounds, they are very well maintained. But they are always having their senior players playing. It doesn't make sense to me that if you want to grow the cricket and you want to become a test nation cricket, you have to have your grassroots. Come on, that is, that is a laughable uh, comment done by coach and uh, president of Canada that they want to make it, uh, and it is online, it is on record during the interview in uh, St. Kitts, they yeah. said they want to make it a test nation. You don't have a single tournament in Canada which lasts for three days and you are talking about becoming a test nation. You don't, you have not developed a single player who can at least bat for complete 30 overs or 40 overs and you want to become a test nation playing. So, be realistic. So, I have a different take on it but yes. I am from Pakistan, you are from India. I am sure you are well aware of it. Hmm. Once you, uh, under 13, you play 30 to 40 overs in hmm. India and Pakistan. Yeah. Once you become 15, hmm. you'll be given opportunity 40 to 50 overs. Yeah. Once you become 17, yeah. you play 90 overs. <laughs> yeah. Once so, you become 18. So, I will, I will stop you here because we have also limit of time. But I would like to ask one question quickly and then I will come to you, Mr. Amitori. That what was, this is not the only reason why you closed the academy. Because I have been following you on the Facebook, there was other reasons also where I saw that you openly declared that there is a bias against your players. Yes. So, can you give us some of the uh, hint or example or proof that where you can say this is what happened with my players? Well, the in, in 2000, 2018, in, in 2018, there was a kid named Mohammed Adil. Mm -hmm. He was a wicket keeper, represented United Cricket Academy. Mm -hmm. There was a kid named uh, Rahman Pathan, mm -hmm. left hand batsman, spinner. Mm -hmm. There was a kid named Hamza Talal. Mm -hmm. All these guys mm -hmm. were good enough to represent Canada. But my problem is start here. I, I speak to any coach. You know, and this is very natural. Any parents, they say my kids is ready. But if I am at the president of Cricket Canada, and I am, I am talking about on the behalf of Devils Advocate. Let me act like that. How do I do that? How do I decide that? Well, there is something called merit. Merit. Okay, their cricketers. Hmm. Uh, okay, now you can go to the website. Mm -hmm. Where? Which website? You can go to, well, since they play junior cricket, so obviously if they're going to come from your grassroots, mm -hmm. you can go to TDCA website mm -hmm. and you can see who is doing what. Yeah, okay. And selection committee selectors, mm -hmm. I can bet you they can have a one-to-one -one debate with me over here with you in the middle mm -hmm. and you decide. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't even know the name of the, name of the player. But my issue is this. Because there is a lack of merit-based system in Canada and I don't know why it is not established, although cricket board says we have a selector commission, is selection selectors, there is a national selector, there is a junior selector, but there is no merit-based system and I will prove in this program right now. So tell me an example, I will give you an example. There was a selection uh, tournament for under 19, right? Yes. Can I get a, a score card for that? Well, I had uh, I had some issues. Yeah, no, no. Uh, Can you find the score card on the basis of which they decided under nineteen team? Can you find it out for me? Statistics. Uh, it's not available. Why it is not available? Did uh, you ask? I had I had some issues. One of my player was overlooked. Mm -hmm. Was not uh, given a proper opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I send an email to Cricket Canada, mm -hmm. and I requested for a secure card, scorecard. Mm -hmm. What was your reply? Uh, 
I sent an email to general general manager in Engelton Liber for the scorecard. Whoa. I have it on the email. Mm -hmm. His response that he told me that the scorecard is Cricket Canada property. It's in his position, and he's Hang not. Hang on. He said that scorecard is Cricket Canada property. Well, that's that's how I read. So but Amit, now coming to you. Sure. Does it sound logical? No. The scorecard are properties. How I don't believe so. I mean, they should so be. So all uh, the BCCI, Cricket <laughs> Australia, England, who are publishing the scorecard, uh, those are public property or uh, personal uh, property? Uh, how so do you? So, so this so is this is what I call transparency. And when I talk about transparency, <laughs> and that's what I promised, I will prove that there is no transparency in Cricket Canada. They manipulate this transparency as per their law just for their to hide their their inefficiency and their problems okay amit you came from england yes. right now you your first experience with cricket canada and why you decided to do what you are doing right now well Good. um i i founded just cricket you know it's an educational platform an awareness platform mm -hmm. um based on my experience of playing the game you know for many years in england mm. uh, and then post that running in a few clubs Mm. You know, on a management level, helping other colleagues mm. uh, before I decided to emigrate to Canada in 2001, right? But um, at that time, I didn't see much of a, a ground club system, like groundsmen maintaining the grounds, like you just mentioned, you guys. Mm. Um, you know, everything's based on the city doing the work and then potentially having leagues being generated as a result of the demand mm -hmm. for cricket. Mm. Um, and then coming on to my first experience, I'm assuming you're saying Cricket Canada, right? Like this is President Mr. Saini. Um, this was, I believe, uh, at the beginning of September when I went to see a women's tournament by the Canadian College Cricket mm -hmm. uh, people. Canadian College Cricket. Cricket, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I just went to support the women and see what the, the cricket level is like for the women's mm -hmm. side. So I went to that, and then there subsequently a couple of days later there was a, an awards gala. Okay. And, and that's where I believe Mr. Saini had a few words to say. Yes, what did he say? Um, well, it was, you know, pretty long-winded. <laughs> that's the mm. first thing. But the two things that I still distinctly remember, he mentioned uh, funding issues. Mm -hmm. He okay. mentioned uh, around the $80,000 um, funding mark from the government. Um, mm -hmm. And he also mentioned something about the fact that cricket is not an Olympic or Paralympic-related mm. sport. Mm. Therefore, this affects the funding that comes to cricket. Um, however, based on where I come from, based on how Australian Cricket Board, the BCCI Board in India, mm. uh, ECB, England Cricket Board, they get funded privately, mm. i.e. sponsors, mm. media contracts. Mm. And we're talking... They do not depend on government. They don't need to because yeah. they're so big and, and, and so much demand. For you an example, I, I can give you the, all the universities which is run in here, right. most of the fund they organize is through private funding. Uh, right, right. Alumni. Yes. Right. It's not through government. Right. Government does not spend much time. They right, only right. give money for R and D, not for university to run the universities. Okay. So only cricket board, they are depending on government, and I don't know why, uh, because my lawyer was the person who made all the papers, which brought eighty thousand to for the funding, and I was talking to him coming to this program. It was during the Bensonic time he did that, and that eighty thousand is still is hanging around. They have not worked further on because I remember and I think I was talking to you and you said there are further funding uh, provision. Absolutely. And did you ask Cricket Canada that what are the efforts they are doing to grab that money, some of that money? Yes, I did. I mean, I, I believe I initially contacted them in July uh, 2019 mm. uh, just to say that I'm here as a you know voluntary coach. I mean, mm. can I share my experience to help Cricket Canada, you know, mm. the players and whatnot? Mm. Didn't get a response to that. And then subsequently, straight after the Dubai tournament, mm. um, when you know they failed to qualify for the T20 in Australia, mm -hmm. um, you know I was pretty upset. You know I was vouching for Canada to do something this time, but uh, I said, look, you know what are, what are your plans next? You know, and I want to know how much money goes into the men's versus mm -hmm. the women's. Like, what's the split? You know, what does Sports Canada, for example, give to you? Mm. I didn't get a response to that, but I did get uh, a one-line statement saying that you may go to their website for any coaching opportunities, and that was it. Mm -hmm. That's but it. they didn't explain that uh, no. 
what is the proportions, how they are? No split, okay. no, no information about the funding. You are lucky that even you get one liner mail because I have the proof and it will be shown on my TV that a senior player asking that why he is not getting selected I know why he was not selected for this particular tour and this is like more than two months he has got no reply and here is the proof. Hello everyone, welcome back uh, to Straight Bat with the Wish. Uh, so I was talking with Amir Tori and Tahir Khan. So we were talking about the fund available for infrastructure development, right? Yes. So can you can you elaborate on that, Amit? Yeah, I mean because you know of that one line statement, not even mentioning um, or answering my question, hmm. I decided to do further digging and research into you know what Sports Canada or, or this Ministry of Canada and Sports, you know for Canada actually do uh, in terms of supporting cricket. So I wrote to them mm -hmm. and, and they got back to me with some good information which I'd like to read out to you right now. Um, so whom do you wrote this? Mean? This is Ministry of Sport, Ministry and, of Sport. and Science, yes, okay. uh, of Canada, this is Canadian okay. government. Okay. And they uh, were happy to tell me that uh, uh, there would be a budget or there is a budget uh, which was established in 2017 mm -hmm. um, covering $81 billion over 11 years for infrastructure. This is from the sports division. $81 billion, billion for sports infrastructure. Right. And then this investment includes $1 billion for bilateral agreements mm -hmm. with provinces and territories for cultural and recreational infrastructure. $1 billion. $1 billion, yes. So did you write to Cricket Canada asking that what are their efforts to take some of the... Not after that, not okay. yet. Not yet, okay. Okay, so I hope that Cricket Canada is working on it to get some of the share from 1 billion, even 10 million will be good enough for us. Uh, and then and one other thing I'd like to mention is that they're also, when it comes to gender equality, mm -hmm. uh, the government of Canada set a target, of in, uh, a target budget in 2018 to achieve gender equ equality mm -hmm. in sport at every level by 2035, and that's just the initial 30 million dollars investment yeah. in that project and that commitment includes the initial investment of 30 million over three years to support a comprehensive and long-term gender equality in sport strategy aimed at increasing the representation and participation of women and girls in sport as well as to support provide support to NSOs for the great inclusion of women and girls in all facets of the sport. So I, I, it is really difficult to understand that if there is a so big uh, budget for sports infrastructure uh, Cricket Canada cannot grab even the smallest of um, portion I, I, of it. I think everyone's got the same question that if yeah. there's so much money involved, mm -hmm. and I've got a, a very good healthy response from the government of Canada, yeah. um, but that question of funding cannot be provided by the president of you know, Cricket Canada. Um, well, why not? Uh, is that's, that answers your transparency issue, I believe. Yeah, transparency issue. Uh, but Amit, thanks for the information. No problem. And briefly tell me, uh, what are you trying since then? What are your efforts to bring, bring good cricket in Canada? Well, then grassroots. I mean, that's where I started. That's where my passion developed. Mm -hmm. and, and like uh, Mr. Khan here, like, you know, taking the, the youngsters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, finding um, local uh, indoor facilities, you mm -hmm. know, and then trying to promote the sport, especially for women. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do now because you know, there it is uh, from the government that they're trying to push for women to play more. But sport. after uh, hearing to Tahir Khan, mm. what did you? What is your take on it? Because he is going out of the system, and you are getting in. Mm, I, I think I want to bring him back in because uh, you want to bring him back. You know, the results are on the table. Okay. No, but he is he's frustrated with the system. No, I know he's frustrated with the system. Then we we need to tackle all as a team mm -hmm. uh, to ask the right questions, which yes. we started to ask now, which is great. Yeah. But when you've got, you know, your own Canadian national players asking questions about why am I not being developed properly? Yeah. Uh, why do I have to fund my own coaching, for instance? Why is there favoritism? This seems to be an issue that has been existing for quite some time. Yeah, it was, um, it was always there, but it never came up um, with the, I will like to take credit, not credit, but I would like to tell you that since I came in, these are now openly discussed. Otherwise, it was, the problem was always there, but it was never discussed. Nobody was willing to come and speak. I thank to Tahir Khan. I thank to many other people who decided to come and speak up. Right. 
Like and, and and I understand that they are a non-profit organization, so yeah. they're there to help the public okay. play cricket. So from budget to this financial statement, which I would like to discuss now. Uh, so Cricket Canada has announced 2018 financial statement. I'm not sure whether it is completed or not, but it has given enough information uh, to discuss. Okay. And there are some of the points which I have been raising, and I will show you why I have been raising those points. And so that, uh, I have invited a very uh, respected uh, uh, prof cricket professional. He is running a league in Brampton, and he was also a guest in my program in an earlier episode, uh, Mr. Faraz Salim. Uh, so Faraz, welcome. Hello, thank you, Zavish. Thanks, um, thanks for having me again. And to let everybody know, Faraz is also a um, uh, chartered accountant with profession, uh, in profession. So he has a better understanding than of course. all of us sitting here. So he can give us some of the insight of this uh, financial statement. So yes, Faraz, what is your take when you read this financial statement? Yeah, one thing I, I would just like to start off, I think it was Amit who was mentioning something around billions of dollars available for sports and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I could uh, hear him correctly, that was from um, Sports Canada, was it? Um, well, this was from the Government of Canada or the Ministry of Sport. That's yeah. my own impression and of that, yes. So it's interesting to see that uh, Cricket Canada was able to get $80,000 from Sports Canada out of the whole project. But before we get into that, I would just like to, to highlight a few, few key aspects of the financial statements for your viewers to understand and digest. And I would like to start off with the, the very good positive news for Canadian cricket mm. is that Cricket Canada is right now sitting on a pot of a million dollars of cash. So they have a million dollars available to, to start infrastructure or development projects sort of right away. Um, that, that's a good plus. They don't really have any serious liabilities. There's not a lot of payables or money outstanding to other entities. It's um, only $150,000 that they owe someone, which could potentially be vendors or yes. suppliers. And um, so, so there's still some surplus of money to play with. Yeah. Uh, effectively, it's been a, a pretty good year. 2018 was a good year from them. For them, mm. they increased their revenue from 1.2 million to 2.3, um, about a hundred percent increase. Most of the funds came from ICC, as well as from what it looks like on their statements, Bombay Sports Company. I think that the GT20. Yeah, Bombay post, Sports is the GT20, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So about two million came from ICC. And no, I, I can I can read out the breakup. So, uh, one million and eighty-five thousand came from uh, Bombay Sports, one million and thirty-one came from ICC, eighty from eighty thousand from Government of Canada, fifteen thousand from some grant revenue. Provincial dues are fifty thousand, so they are expecting fifty thousand for provincial. It means that all the provincial member has not paid their dues, so please pay it. Uh, interest income is there. Miscellany is seventy-seven thousand, so it come to two million and three hundred forty-five thousand dollar. So it is jump of like hundred percent yes. compared to two thousand seventeen. But for us, uh, it is a good sign. But when I look at the player salaries and allowances, and when I compare with the two thousand seventeen, I see it is a drop. Did you? Uh, and I think you're hearing this from the player circle as well that the money that's actually coming in, and it's obvious in the fact that Cricket Canada right now is sitting on a million dollars of cash, mm. but the money that's actually coming in, which is supposed to be invested back in infrastructure, player development, or field development, I don't think it's actually going into that direction. And I, I'll also try to, and I think you must have noticed that, capital asset is $100,000, just $100,000. Yes, yeah. Thousand dollar, not even hundred and ten. It is hundred thousand yeah. dollar. So, yeah, so what does it really mean? Have any no. So what does it mean? Yeah. There is no capital asset built up by Cricket Canada in last as many years. That's what it tells yeah. me. So no, there is no I national academy. Kind of money, they yeah. would have invested in some pavilions, some infrastructure, some nothing. facilities for players. Nothing. Um, but nothing. No. Yeah. So tell me one thing, what do you read about this player salaries and allowances? Because I will tell you that the number of tour was more than the last year, right? If I'm not wrong. 
even the you are sitting in the 1 million surplus of revenue, you do not give contract to the players. What is the reason for that? Yeah, I think uh, that, that's a real good question and I think someone from Cricket Canada should come and explain this. It, it's just, it, to me, just looking at the numbers exclusively, it just looks like that players are not being compensated for their hard work and their dedication towards the sport. Especially if, uh, I mean, Cricket Canada could make the case that, listen guys, you don't have the funds and all the funds that you had be invested back. Mm. But in this case, they actually have the funds available. And yeah. the true priorities should be the people who represent the country, which are the players, as well as the facilities that they play on or practice at. Um, it, it just could be, and, and, and you know, to apply for funding and to ask for grants or ask for sponsorship requires a lot of brain power and the right management that could actually fill, fill up 200 pages of forms to request money. And it doesn't look like that CC is in that position to ask for private sponsorship and, and, and get more dollars. It's just a plus for them that GT20 came in with waving a, a cash pile of a million, which helped them. Yeah. They haven't really figured out what to do with it. Yeah, so I don't know why they have not figured out, but when President was telling in that gala speech that we have problem of fund, he was sitting on a one million surplus. Well, he may have been right? at that so point, but at the end of the day, the, the government is supposed to just support. That's why it's in the support column. Yeah. Now, there are other you know, programs that they support athletes, right, and, yeah. and hosting, for example, but there's zero dollars in those two segments for cricket. But at the same time, what I don't understand is on their website, um, it, it shows that they are supported or at least recognized by the Olympic Committee of Canada. So, you know, is there a conflict of what, what they're presenting to us? I don't know. But the problem it doesn't is seem transparent enough. The problem which I see is that because there is no transparency and accountability, they're not able to present their case to the government properly. They do not have guts to go to the government because they know their, their paperwork is not complete. There are so many and problems Ramesh, going on. I also on. think that outside of transparency and accountability, it's a matter of um, also the right representation. Right like representation, yes. And you know, people like Cricket Canada sit at a board meeting to influence decisions. I highly doubt that. And here I will, I will also like to refer everyone who is listening to this, uh, 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 this program. Please go to the Cricket Ireland website and see how the financial statements are presented by the chairman. See how accountable that guy is and how he is giving the breakups. How he is explaining the reason of up and down. Did you see in the Cricket Canada website any message from anybody explaining the reasons? No. This, and this when you write an email to the uh, board, there will be absolutely no reply from them. I can guarantee you that. There's 92 pages available from the Australian board, yeah. 40 of which are just on the financials. So that's the reason why they have gone up, why yeah. Ireland has gone up. You're looking at half a billion dollar total revenue yeah. coming from that, yes. that board, for example. And that's why right they're at the top. Yeah. Right? There's, there's serious talk about what they're going to do and, and their powerhouses, yes. But we should be aiming towards being a powerhouse. I mean, we're light years almost away from that type of level, aren't we? And I will, I'll, really I'll ask you as a, as a chartered accountant, uh, Faraz, if I ask you to go and audit, right, which account you will first hit and see there is a suspicion and not clarity? <laughs> I think I, a, I, I'm just asking a, a fair question. Yeah, that, that's a very loaded question because their biggest expense is tournament cost, development, apparel and equipment of $829,000. Yeah. I would feel that there may be, and this is a maybe, there may be some wiggle in that account. So I would, if I was to look at these statements, I would start by looking at the travel cost, the flight, the accommodation. Did we get the fair market rate, or were we actually paying a premium versus what the flight would be like? I would start with that account if I was standing as an auditor. I will tell you uh, in one of my online uh, Facebook uh, program, uh, the lady from uh, uh, Alberta uh, told me and she was cricket coordinator for national level. She said that she was requesting cricket board to uh, take the ticket when it was at the lowest, like three months at, in advance. But it was denied and the ticket was done at the last minute and they paid multiple times of that price. So that is one yeah. of the problem, right? So, but 
Coming to back to you, Tahir, uh, I see that development cost expenditure has gone up multiple times, like 100 percent increase. Did you see those money coming to the grassroots players and for their development, for their fitness? So, what development costs are there? How many tours we did for last year, last one year? Can you tell me that? I can tell you what I know. I'm not uh, seriously involved with them on that level, but I can tell you through my experience what I know. Mm. Uh, I think my son was sent. Uh, I, my son was uh, selected to be a part of the development team. Yeah, how much was he getting? Uh, I think he was given a airfare. Oh, that's fine. And uh, hotel room. Mm -hmm. And uh, two sets of uniform mm -hmm. and fifty dollars a day. What do you say? Fifty dollar so a day. Fifty dollar a day. So fifty divided by eight hours at least. How much it comes to? Well, the breakfast was included in the hotel. So I will say seventy dollar. Well, if you realistically look at it, it comes to thirty-two dollars and fifty. Oh, thirty. Sorry, uh, thirty-two dollars and fifty cents U.S. Not even a minimum pay, which is required to pay. So, okay, that's what and it comes to. And we have got cost of expenditure of eight hundred twenty-nine thousand. I'm just giving an example. So that's the reason it explains the uh, salaries, player salaries and allowances is only sitting at two hundred thousand, even less than last year. Okay. And if you see, the, uh, there is no revenue generated from any sponsorship other than GT20. And this is year by year, the same thing going on. I mean, they, they seem to be relying on the ICC associate membership that they've got, fair yeah. enough. But that's like taking it for granted, right? Yeah. Now that they've failed to uh, qualify as a national team you know, to the uh, Australian T20 tournament, yeah. uh, aren't they going to wonder like why... Are we going to continue funding a nation that isn't really developing or getting stronger? Yeah, like because, because why would they continue to con pay? Because the attitude of the leader is here okay. that why do I invest on ICC whatever money they give, they take in for their tournament. So, Faraj, any any other issues which you see in this financial statement which you'd like to bring forward? And I, I would like. Also, to it doesn't it doesn't say if these financial statements are audited. Right, like yeah. generally in the beginning there would be a page that says um, whoever did the, the compilation would say this, these are audited financial statements. Mm -hmm. um, I would think that Cricket Canada would get this audited, but I highly doubt because it doesn't say anything here. Mm -hmm. So there is more chance of manipulation if the statements are not really audited. Yeah. So I, I hope they will, it will get audited because as per the rule, if government is paying more than uh, $30,000, it has to be audited, if I am not wrong. And I think in uh, last last time when I checked, it did show that uh, the financial statement was audited. So I hope this year also they will get, it will get audited. And, but the problem which I highlighted today is that your revenue is going up, you are sitting on $1 million surplus and you still you do not give contract to the players. Forget about the development or whatever you are talking $829,000, I do not know where yeah. it went in, what was the black, black hole where it went in. Oh, okay, it reminded me, there was $650,000 as per President's own statement was done on that Namibia tour, but he later on denied and he said, no, I said overall development program, but here it is saying $829,000, whereas he told me a couple of months back, that no, it was overall development effort, what amount he f said on the Facebook account. The video is nowhere to see, but if you get a chance to see that video, please correct me if I am wrong. But that was the figure floated by pres President himself that $650,000 was spent on that overall development, not on the Namibia tour. So, if you get a hold of that video, please check and correct me if I am wrong. But here the figure is $829,000, so I don't know how this $200,000 more increased and how many tours we did, we can count on the on the finger, three or four. So this is, I call mismanagement, uh, inefficiency, whatever you want to call, 
because if you will ask questions to Cricket Canada, nobody will answer. So, I will rest my case. For us, any closing statement you would like to give? I think um, I think it's really important what you're doing. This this work is important, and I would encourage players who are playing in various leagues to start to ask questions yeah. on what is going on at the top because. In any other country, the top is actually supposed to put funds back within the regions and try to, to develop cricket. We are so far away in Canada, and it's really important that players start to ask questions and yet get behind in uh, bringing a change into the Canadian environment for cricket. And it is so ironical that we live in an advanced country. Players in third world countries are talking to the board. They are doing asking the right questions but why don't I don't understand why our player who lives in an advanced country like Canada fear so much that they cannot put a questions to their board is it is it so scary I don't know sir your closing remarks Amit Amit Ori I'll um, start with you yeah no I mean it, I, I definitely think there's something wrong I mean there's no doubt about it right mm -hmm. um, you've had 20 years as a country to develop uh, something that you know You've got consistent migration coming from countries like India, Pakistan, mm -hmm. England. I'm one of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and to see where we're at right now, even financially, is uh, catastrophic, okay? Mm -hmm. So, honestly, someone really needs to shake the tree as, as firmly as possible um, and, and really try and help, you know, these young players who have, thanks to you, you know, again, thank you, for enabling them to start speaking out about the issues at hand. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting further and further about asking these questions openly, mm -hmm. publicly, because you know, you're a public organization. You yeah. should be answering these questions because they're fair questions, yeah. right? And you, therefore you should be transparent and accountable. Therefore you can build trust and therefore build a good future for local academies, for great coaches like Mr. Khan here, mm -hmm. who've you know, clearly done so much for our communities. And that money that they're sitting on needs to be poor and a portion of that needs to come back to mm -hmm. academies mm -hmm. and then those academies train those kids to come back to provide great quality cricket mm -hmm. and therefore that's how things advance this is how it happens in australia <laughs> england everywhere. india yeah. everywhere yeah. so it needs to happen here unless and, and you invest money you will not you get will not get an output yeah. whatever goes in must come out yeah. right so that's just normal understanding logical as far as i'm concerned but you have to be transparent you know and you all have to work together as a team and that's how you develop a real sport. So thank you, uh, Farah, uh, Faraz, and thank you, Amit, thank uh, you. for your wonderful uh, point of view. And uh, sure. it was always a pleasure talking to all of you because you guys can give me a good insight. Uh, but uh, coming to you, Tahir, before you go for your closing remark, what do you think now will happen with Arslan? Because Arslan is in the system, and you have come to State Bad with Devesh, and you know the repercussions. So, w what are your anxiety and your apprehension related to that? Realistically speaking, I have thought about it. Mm -hmm. You still decided to come to my program? Yes, I have, I have thought about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know what they think about my son. Mm -hmm. They have wasted his 18 months mm -hmm. just to shred his confidence mentally. Now, this is very interesting. Can you tell me how? Uh, in 2018, he was the skipper of the World Cup, 2018 in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. He was the second highest run scorer in that World Cup. Among all the team? No, no, among his own, own players. Okay. The guy who beat him, beat him by two runs. Mm -hmm. But he still holds the record as the highest run scorer ever for Canada. Mm -hmm. I think there are seven or eight players seven, eight players, they had the opportunity to play the two World Cup, mm -hmm. and he's one of them. Mm -hmm. And he is sitting at, I think, 427 Around. total, okay. uh, with the uh, average of 47.75. Yeah, I, I checked that list, and I can mm -hmm. tell you that even Sikhar Devan is also sitting there in that top 20 players. Yeah. And I see Arslan Khan's name there. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. And, uh, I mean, there's no Canadian ever achieved that. Yeah. So, where do you think that after under-19 uh, under World Cup, he came back, he did a pretty well, good job as a captain. Why he was not groomed further as a captain? Well, I, I think it's 
what I know about cricket is I do not think we have a proper, uh, uh, our cricket board is aware of the proper concept of the cricket. They are not aware? I do not think so. Mm -hmm. I believe so. I am beginning to believe now. Mm. They do not have a proper structure. Mm -hmm. There is no merit system whatsoever. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think if I think if they give it to me and I just put a, you know, make a little pieces of paper, you know, and put the name, few names on it and draw them, mm. probably I could I could pick a better team. But he was selected for under develop, uh, development team, right? So do you think that by selecting him and not as a captain or maybe vice captain? Uh, was it was a fair and a square chance for him? <coughs> not really. Captaincy is not his right. Hmm. But what was unfair in there? Hmm. Okay, they had Natesh Kumar. Mm -hmm. Who is your best batsman? Who? Who, eh? who, who is the best batsman in Canada? As people say. Well, so far, if you look at the numbers, yeah. it's the only best batsman ever. Canada had that was Ashish Bagai. Ashish Bagai, yeah. Okay. Average wise. Average wise and runs wise. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it under 19 records, you have Ursula. Mm -hmm. And the rest in between is float, floating around. So, okay. but right now, yes, Natesh is, uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's a very good batsman. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of, uh, one of their best. Yeah. Right, I have no no doubt about it. I I like the kid. He's positive, always stay fit. Mm -hmm. The thing is, what I see is there. Okay, when Arsalan came back from New Zealand, mm. he should have been taken to the team, to Namibia, mm. or anywhere where the team goes. Even if you don't want to play him, mm -hmm. just to give him a feeling that he so he can stay on his fitness, he could do this, he could do that. Me as a parent, I can only only do so much. I lost all my bank balance, mm -hmm. my lifetime saving, running this academy because I want an Arsalan to be a cricketer. Mm -hmm. I sold my house, mm -hmm. invested on him. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to make sure, you, you know, you can go check it out. Nine Batava Crescent, Tobiko was no, this is this is the story of all the parents I have spoken to. They have invested a lot of time with their kids, uh, and all the all reply they get it from Cricket Canada is that we have not asked you to invest money. Why you are investing? No, but if you want your kids to play, then you are doing on your own will. Canada Cricket Canada is not forcing you to invest. No, this is this is not a good answer, but this is the answer comes from them. No, right? no, I'm just I'm just. What I'm trying to establish is this: as a Cricket Canada, you are taking money from ICC. Mm -hmm. Why ICC is giving you money to develop cricket? Well, they are saying hundred eight hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars. No, no. State. Why they are giving you that money? Please to, to tell develop. Me. To develop. To develop. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I invested. Mm -hmm. I created a cricketer for you. Mm -hmm. So you should be from now. You should be taking it. Where do you think Kohli came from? Yeah. I'm sure you know Virat Kohli. Yeah. Where do you think Babar Azam came from? From the system. Where do Shekhar Davan came from? Yeah, from the system. You have a player mm -hmm. who achieved and hold the record. Mm. I say court to court mm. on the TV. Yeah, not only Arslan. There were other players also like oh, Akash Gill. Uh, Fayaz, there is no doubt about the talent. Fizzled out. There is no doubt about the talent yeah. in Canada. Yeah. There's a lots of talent. Yeah. You have to understand the beauty and the legacy of Canada. Yeah. So what you, you think have all cricket nations in Canada. Yeah, I know. You have Indians. You have Pakistanis, Sri Lankans, English. You know, from everywhere. Yeah, that that I agree or somewhere disagree also because I see these uh, all sections divided sometime a lot which is not good for Canada because I see Punjabi team, I see Sri Lankan team, I see uh, <laughs> yeah, West Indian teams but I don't see Canada way, yeah. team. So, no. that is also a challenge for cricket board which I don't know how they are managing it. But coming back to Arslan's uh, you know captaincy you were talking about, what was the problem you see in the captaincy in development team? 
I think, well, I, I, I believe if they're not going to develop him now, yeah. uh, they got cricket. No, you said that, forget about because it is cricket board decision not to take him as a captain, fine. But the captain he they decided to took, take in, what was the problem with that? Well, that kid does not have a PR card. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have an immigration. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a uh, Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. He has a student visa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who knows he's going to be here. Or not. Or not. So you are investing a money to a, with a player who is not even sure that he is going to stay in Canada. Yeah. And, and, and uh, on the, the top of that... Mm -hmm. You don't find any records of him. Yeah. I couldn't. If somebody can help me. Yeah. You know. I, I mean, I, I like the kid. I got nothing against against him. Mm -hmm. But uh, truly speaking, I think Natish, if they didn't want it to make an Arsalana captain because they did not want it to develop him, mm -hmm. you know, they could have, uh, if they're not going to develop him now, when are they going to develop him? They should have made Natesh Kumar a captain mm -hmm. and they should have made Arsalana vice captain. Okay. So that right? is your wish. No, no, that's not my wish. That, that's if the you, way it should be. If you read between the lines, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Who's captaining India now? Virat Kohli. Where do Virat Kohli came from? He, he took a training under uh, Dhoni. He didn't become captain. No, 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 no. Was he the captain of the under-19 World Cup? Yes, he was. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the idea to I make... I made my point. Yeah. He, d he achieved something there. Yeah. This is how India decided. And yeah. The, Tahirji, uh, the problem with the system here is that you do not have the foresightness. You pick, you assemble a team. My point, and you know, I have spoken to it very, very openly, that when you make someone as a captain of under 19, you saw something in him, right? Absolutely. You don't make him no, out of lottery. That's, that's huge you, you saw some potential <laughs> him to develop as a captain. After under <laughs> 19, you left him alone to get frustrated. And then... Oh Sorry, Dimesh, I did not mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. That is a different story. Mm -hmm. And I pr probably we will do that in next episode, mm -hmm. in the captaincy. Okay. Okay? Okay. Uh, but you will also accept that when the chance was given to Arsalan, because of his fitness, he could not... Oh, yes, it. definitely. Yeah. I blame no one but Arsalan. Okay. Thank you for that. Because I, be I mean, if Cricket Canada does not pick him, yeah. I, will not say, I will not say anything. Okay. And I have thought about these things. Yeah. And I knew me sitting here, yeah. what they're going to do to our salon. Yeah. And I don't, okay, it doesn't so bother now me. Now we any. have to wrap it up because we are, sure. we have crossed the time. Yeah. Uh, but with this thought, I would like to, you know, leave you all alone. Uh, that it is a good news that we have excess of fund now, excess of fund like $1 million. But the salary expenses for the player has gone down. The expenditure on travel, meals and everything has gone up, which is okay. Development cost is showing, tournament cost, development and apparel and equipment is more than 100% increase. So, think about it. Yeah, this is not what simple thing. That why we cannot have a contractual agreement with the players and at least give them $20,000 for 6 months or 7 months. Is it a big task? So thank you very much for watching this and thanks all my guests, Amit, Tahirji. Thank you, Faraj, for uh, you know uh, joining me in a very short notice and giving us some insight on this financial statement. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem, anytime. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. This might be out. Taken comfortably. That's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary.